we'll call a special meeting of New Plow City Council for a budget work session to order. Welcome the uh, audience, administration, and the rest of council. With that, Chris. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grove. Present. Councilman Vaughn. Here. Councilman Shammy. Here. Councilman Shammy. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Vice Mayor Abelson. Here. All seven present. All right. With that, we'll have the invocation by Chief Trustee. Father well, Lord, we thank you for the day. We thank you for the beautiful weather. Lord, we pray that you please be in this meeting, that you would guide and that thy perfect will be done. Bless our troops, our first responders, especially this day being First Responder Day, and their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Having said that, I don't think we get any comments from the public. So we'll go to the resolution and ordinance section. Chris. So tonight there's two introduction, one action. Um, A, one is 2024-56E, introduction tonight, public hearing and action tonight. And ordinance designating Howard Kitko as the acting city manager and declaring an emergency. Go, move. Have a motion and a second. <coughs> Any, dis Oops, any discussion? If not, Chris. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shannon? Yes. Accepted 7 to 0. Um, Ordinance 2024-57, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 11-12-24, an ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of the public service assistant city manager to enter into an agreement for the city's water main and service line replacement project. So moved. Second. Let's just read it. Oh, no. I'm sorry. sorry. Question. Sorry. Question. <laughs> Should that date be 11-4 or 11-5? I can answer that. It's 11-12 due to a time crunch because there was already scheduled to be a uh, special meeting that night anyway. Okay. So we were just going to move it up to give me plenty of time to get it to no problem. Department of Development. All right. Other business. Public record training. Let's do that. So in your packet there was a uh, public records training um, where there was a couple of uh, virtual and a, a couple virtual events and then a, an on-demand course uh, that could be attended by council so there's some dates times I believe the first virtual one um, is like a regular day t starts at 10 a.m. they uh, do bathroom breaks they break for let me see break for lunch yes. they break for lunch and it ends at 1 15 um, the next one is a must register in <clears throat> advance on the 10th. That one is uh, 10 a.m. to 1.15. And then the last one, which is they call it on-demand uh, certified uh, records training. And that one is a straight through three-part uh, time where basically, if I remember right, you just get right online and push through it and complete it. If you have any issues with trying to register, Miss um, Lowry can... Uh, assist in getting reg getting you registered for that uh, class any questions on the public records I think you guys just went correct um, yeah. we missed half of it because there was a scheduling conflict oh gotcha mm -hmm. but we yeah. talked to them and they told us we could do it online oh, okay I was just gonna make a clarification that you guys have passed a resolution for Randy to complete the public records training for mm -hmm. you, and he was not able to complete that. So it, it will need to be completed since he was not able to complete that. So. 
All right, moving right along, disaster recovery and response plan. Under the disaster, so at the last meeting, I believe the ordinance had passed with some amendments, and I can let maybe Jay clarify on uh, some of the stuff that was added to the ordinance. Uh, yeah, I think we're okay after I looked at it a little bit more. So section three was just added to, um, basically I believe the amendment um, was to add the language so it would say the city manager and or assistant city manager, is that correct? Okay. And then, besides, I think that's fine. Um, I found out later that the assistant manager, city manager wasn't listed in the ordinance because only Howie is the assistant city manager. So like for some reason he is not serving in that position, then you don't have an assistant city manager. Um, but I think if you use city manager and or assistant city manager, you're fine. Any questions? Okay, moving right We have to do any more action on it. It's good to I go. Don't think so. Okay. All right, then I guess we're going to move on to the budget. I think just like last time, uh, whoever you know attended before, um, Colleen Harris, the finance director, will work our way. You know, obviously starting off with the general fund and starting off with council. Um, you know, if anybody has any questions, you know, there's there's history listed up there. Um, I know for a couple of you, it's going to be a first time going through the budget. Um, it, like I said, if there's any questions, we try to go kind of in a, a category, for instance, you know, we're trying to get them grouped and not get into like specific how many uh, 716th washers did we order last year. You know, we're just going to tell you in maintenance, we're, this is kind of what we spend as a general. So um, if there's no questions before we get started, Ms. Harris. Any questions? Okay. For the two new ones, and Mr. Chamney, it's been a little while since you've been um, on the budget. The revenues are there, just um, they're not anything that you actually vote on. Where you vote on the appropriations, the expenditures. But the revenues, of course, are posted to show you where our money comes from for each of the funds. Each of the funds are like a mini checking account. They all have their revenue source and they all have their expense sources. And um, with the expense side, it is considered a not to exceed. So those numbers usually have some padding in them, so we don't have to come back to council every month for a supplemental. We usually have um, a little bit more than we anticipate. And on the revenue side, I do not inflate any of the revenue, and it usually comes in higher than expected. And that's how the history has gone back for, I've got 10 years actually on my computer. But well, we're going to start with the general fund, and the general fund revenue I'm just going to kind of go line by line real quickly. We have real estate tax, city income tax, local government between the county and the state, cigarette tax, liquor tax, homestead, cable. We have our assessments, which is grass and weed, uh, public nuisance, and we're looking in this column, I'm sorry. Zoning permits, fines, it's our mayor's court, and a little bit of traffic. Uh, fines that we get from Clark County. Tower leases and both of the shelter rentals are included and combined. We have interest income, um, some miscellaneous, and we're looking at about $2.2 .2 million of income for the general fund. Now we break down the expenditures. This is going to be our biggest one to go through. The rest of the funds are a lot smaller. So they break down, we start with council. So we start with wages, and that is for all the council. There's a little bit extra in there for possibly clerk. If we do talk about later about increasing council for future, we'll we'll work on an adjustment. With the wages, we always have whatever taxes, Social Security, <coughs> Medicare. Some of them are in OPRS. Some are in Social Security. One or the other. Workers' comp. There's our total benefits for the council portion. Then we have a training and travel, seven thousand dollars. This group of contractual includes maintenance of facilities, equipment, membership dues. You're going to see these repeated through all the funds. When we compare for our current budget and this budget, and I gave you some history, it gives you a little bit of um, idea where we came from. These are all also, I wanted to back up, actuals. 
This is still budgeted totals. Office supplies, operating supplies. I did highlight one. There was some discussion about the dais um, project, and I did not get an, an exact amount of that discussion. It's in there highlighted whether we keep it or not. That is totally up to council. With that in place, your budget's $106,000. $58. Next is the city manager. We have, again, we're going to go from wages to all of the benefits that are included with it. It's $101,000. We're at $109 this year, not a big increase. Three seventeen dollars total. Training and travel, we did reduce a little bit from this year. We didn't use all of the 7000 and that's how we, when we started our draft, we actually reduced that. Then your contractual, communication, postage, maintenance of equipment, membership dues, office supplies, operating, fuel. Most of this is all just repeat of what we have this year. But as you see, there's years that we don't use some, or they come in a little bit less. We have no capital, $1,000 miscellaneous. The um, manager's budget is $339,224. Under the finance, start with wages. Excuse me, Ms. Yes. Mrs. Harris, if I may. And I apologize, I have my back. Well, that's Anytime that's you fine. need a question. Uh, the manager's wages, is that strictly his? So I'll or go is back anybody up else included in that? This two hundred and fifteen thousand. Yes. I'll go to my wage sheet. That is the city manager. A portion of the service director, assistant city manager, and the administrative assistant. That two hundred and fifteen nine ninety one is their gross. Okay. And then the wages are on top. So you have two and a quarter. Right, thank you. You're welcome. I'll just do that same for the finance. The finance is 279000 I threw in a little overtime. We have it occasionally. In the finance department, you have myself, finance director. You have our payroll tax administrator, the finance clerk that does our um, prep and accounts payable, and our central cashier that are front counter. So we actually have four full uh, people in the finance department's budget. And then the wages uh, <coughs> with the taxes for the benefits comes into 468.37. This increase this year is we have a new employee that went from no insurance to um, getting married. So for next year, I had to increase the health insurance part. The rest is about the same. Training and travel came in at 7,000 for our budget request. Contractual, I'm going to start jumping down to the bottom, 199500 a little reduction from what we have on this year's budget. Office supplies, I put in 8600 less than what I have this year. And the total is going to come in for the finance department at $713,137, uh, but it's the wages that are up. Going to the planning department. In the planning department, let's see, we have a <coughs> people in there. We have one full-time code enforcer. We have one full-time planning director, excuse me. And we have a budget this year for two part-time code enforcers. We have one currently this year. There was discussion about adding another part-time. So that is in the budget. We have a partial part-time gentleman that shares park and he also does the abatement going so some of his expense comes out of the planning department. Planning department's budget then with um, increasing with another part-time code enforcer for next year would bring his wages up to 142 for that department. Get one full-time and two part-time. With taxes and benefits, it would be at 202450 Training, comprehensive plan, same as this year. Under their contractual, 
We did add maintenance of infrastructure. Mr. Bridge was talking about having a separate line item for that. And I don't see everything else is just a little bit more on his computer because we'll have an extra part-time enforcer that's going to have an iPad and, and subscriptions. So the contractual amount is 90000 Materials and supplies is six, same as this year, and capital is 34000 Now, in the capital, we have planned for new service truck, 34000 And those, um, I think, were lightly talked about earlier, weren't they, in the capital? Mm -hmm. And then they'll be in this. Uh, budget. So that's the 34000 for capital. Planning department then's total would be $345,250. Next is the law director. I um, increased that service in anticipation if we have more growth and more legislation next year. We don't use it again. These are not to exceed. Nothing ever comes out of the accounts. Put him at 90. I'm going into the parks for wages for the parks department. I have one full time <coughs> and we just have one full time, one full time, and then we are we'll talk about standby pay that's included in um, some of these accounts. So parks has sixty six thousand seven hundred and twelve, and with the benefits. This budget's coming in at 97, just a little more than this year. Training and travel, they don't usually have anything, but we put $100 in there, and the CDL testing should be coming in a little bit um, higher this year. We did not have too much last year and prior. <coughs> Contractual for the Parks Department is 103000 Some of the increases here from this year are just a little bump on um, the maintenance of the separate second shelter added increased cost from your history. And that pretty much sums up a little bit extra supplies, extra maintenance. Under materials and supplies, same thing, 25300 And our capital is 102000 Capital for 102,000 is proposed at playground equipment. That's not been firmly talked about. There's 50,000 in that. Landscape trailer, a new mower, a wood chipper that's going to be shared with the street department. That comes up to 102,000. And a little bit of miscellaneous for parks. Department's actually coming in under this year's budget at $337,913. Special events. This first line item is Parks and Recs, and this is where we've used for the new um, movies. We've used that line item this year. Fireworks, I have it at the same, unless there's a, a, a newer cost that we need to talk about as last year for fireworks, and this amount was the employee appreciation, holiday, Christmas party, special events. Um, we haven't used half of it this year, so that, that's kind of a high number. That's coming at 39000 Plans and buildings under contractual, 337000 a little reduction from this year. Operational supplies came at 16000 a little less than this year. And capital for lands and buildings will be service garage shared with a wastewater treatment plant. It's a $115,000 project, and lands and buildings is going to pay 57500 towards it, along with a city garage truck lift. Just real quick, just to clarify that um, the old section of our city garage down on the, behind the license bureau, <laughs> there's an old section, and in the new section, we're tearing down the old section. It's got cracked walls and the roof is shot, so we're going to tear it down and rebuild it. So the back truck that is typically out at the hut, taking up half of the lane, will now come down here. It'll be just 
dry storage is what we're going to um, build with that. So demo and trying to get a new pole, uh, metal building attached to the new part of the city garage. That's it. There's no way that building can be saved? The walls have it tuck pointed or something? No, it's actually the whole roof. Um, it's got the uh, almost the same style that's in here. It's got the metal girders and everything. And they're, they are absolutely shot. Um, the, the block in it, you can see where the footer um, that was below, I'm sorry, the block that was sitting on the footer has shifted some. So really the walls are not, and they actually attached the new section to it. So there's been water running down on it, and it's just probably better to not, it's not just tucking like a, a fire chimney uh, or a fireplace chimney. This is going all the way through. So we're going to uh, get that out of there. When you tear that down, are you taking the foundation out too? So since, since it's shifting? Well, so the, the new building will go on pole style. So it won't need those footers, but they will be coming out. We will try to salvage the uh, floor, the concrete floor in it, if it, if it works or we can get, go around it. Our city building at 331 South Church. We still make a payment on that. Miscellaneous and under lands and buildings, we have the budget estimated at 431. Excuse me, Mrs. Five. Harris. Yes. How much is owed on the, uh, did you say which building was that? 331 South Church. And I'd How much is owed on that still? I'll get that information back to you. Thank I don't you. have it with me. my paper for questions that I'd have to bring back tomorrow. Okay. <coughs> Mayor's Court, this one's, um, I just increased this, the wages. It, it's still new and we, we started in 2022. It was a very short amount of time. It was more than halfway through the year before it started. We had 2023. Um, this year we're we're under budget on our expenditures, but I increased it in case she has more needed help or has any more um, sessions that they need to do. So I've got the salary at 23900 Training and travel, $800. Contractual, 18800 Almost a duplication of this, just a little increase for this year. Office supplies actually reduced it. She's not using as much this year. So her budget for the mayor's court is $48,210. And the magistrate's uh, fee is in here under professional services. The wages is all Christie. There's the mayor's court. So now we're down to miscellaneous general fund. And there isn't anything a lot different than this year's budget. We increased the postage and meter fees. The planning department has been putting out a lot more letters that have, um, they're sent out certified with return receipts. So those are, I think, six to eight dollars a piece and instead of your 67 cents. So I, I doubled that postage to kind of stay into what we're experiencing this year. And that department then would come in at 116000 last is our transfers and we're gonna these will connect into the other funds that as revenue sources when we get into the next funds so a transfer to the street fund we talked about that this year first year that they wanted a hundred thousand um, dollars transferred to the street fund just to, to save so we have the, the government center we have been putting in 25,000 since we started that in 2021 so if that is still on your you know your wishes we'll we'll leave that there transfer to the pool is a needed transfer and when we get to the pool fund we'll see that it needs a supplement to carry it through same with the cemetery we do it about every other year so we did not put anything into the pool in those two years so we're, we have to build that fund up cemetery transfers to the street uh twin creek debt fund we had ha we have enough in there to write out the debt payment but it needs a little boost this year 2025 
the other debt service fund that's every year and the let out was a one year project that was last year and now we have the new street sweeper. That puts transfers at 300000 and this is your general fund estimated ending balance at this time. Estimated to bring over $2 million. We have revenue source of $2.2 million, expenditures of two point eight, using $663,000 in fund balance for an ending of $1,300,000. Now, before it gets to, um, I wanted to go back and, and show some history here. So, our ending balance, our actual in 2023, was 2.8. 2020, let me go the other way. It looks better. <coughs> we started at 2014. Our ending balance, and these are actuals, was 52000 20. 15 was 167. Here's where we started putting in for the police levy. And that that took a lot of the expenses the general fund used to pay to support the police levy now is supplemented on their own. So our general fund really started to grow. These are our ending balances. And every year we go to budget and we have what we're projecting now. Using more revenue or using more expenses than our revenue is. But once we get the actuals in it balances out. We have not had, other than one year, which is 2024, we actually used more of our, um, well, this we're not finished yet, using more of the expenditures and our revenue. And with that, I went ahead and estimated out where we're going to be at the end of the year. And we are at 90% collection of our revenue. And our revenue should be at 83%. So we're, we're coming in higher. So that will increase that revenue. And our expenditures right now are 70% for this time of year, and we should be at 83 So our expenditure is going to be lower. So I anticipate that we're going to have about a $200,000, $250,000 plus growth in our ending general fund, not the 800 that shows right now because I have to get this at the end of the year, that total brought over. So that's going to bring over a lot more different numbers. And that's routinely what happens. So um, there are some funds that are, are going to be like this. So I just wanted to kind of stop there and discuss, talk about if everything in here is approved to the expenditures, we probably will only spend about 75% of that. But if we did have needs and we did need to transfer something or we go back for another supplemental and say this broken we need to do that the money's in there so it's just something that we watch and monitor but that's guessing it out when we start this budget we start in june so we're looking out for a year and a half in advance and then we start tightening it up of course at the end of the year when i bring our books over in january for a december report you'll have your actuals Any questions on the general fund or any one of those inside the general fund? Is this where we make our changes or, or suggestions? If you have or suggestions or changes, yeah, mm -hmm. bring them this for the discussion. Yeah. Um, I guess I have quite a few, really. I'd have to go backwards here. Um, the maintenance of the infrastructure was $20,000 for a uh, planning board. Uh, I don't understand that. I understand it's a building and we're trying to help charge them some on the building. I guess I just don't understand the rest of that. So maintenance of infrastructure could be anything from tearing down abatements um, in the planning department. We also have a little bit of community development. It is. I'll have to get some more detail because it is a new line item this year. Okay, and then they're also getting a new truck in that department? That's anticipated in the capital to have a new truck. Okay, so we're not talking about that yet? We are because it, it is in these numbers and it'll be attached. If you approve the budget, you're approving the capital this year. They used to bring the capital ahead 
and you you planned on that first and then we put those numbers <coughs> in and we went with the rest of the budget so since that is um, was already brought up you yeah, know this the capital improvement plan was already brought in July July uh, July or August and approved then so then we take that and CIP numbers and pop them into the budget all right but we didn't get a chance to talk about the CIP numbers and that was I think we're it kind of fell down in my opinion so uh, the other the new man part-time man is that whose opinion is it that that's needed because to me that seems like a not a public service but kind of a detriment to public <laughs> so I really don't want to see another man in that department personally so where did that come from that we need another man part-time there um, I can I'll, I'll try to uh, just from what we've talked about um, Dylan who goes around and does our property abatements tall grass trash mm -hmm. um, trying to keep up with those uh, of course this year was an outlier uh, it was a very droughtful year so we didn't get as many grass abatements as we would typically do but getting out to the houses that have um, you know uh, facades soffits fascias garage falling uh, falling down those we got to get out and get those cleaned up so with those amongst the grasses and the other abatements <coughs> excuse me um, sometimes it's cheaper to go out and have two part-time people than it is have one full-time person with full-time benefits so it is adding more time to go out there and help clean up the city but there'll be less throughout the winter for them to do so one person one half a person could probably do that job um i don't know i would have to probably follow up on the thought uh typically abatements are down in the winter and that's when you know we'll look at some other structural stuff um but no it is not as busy in the winter and i don't know because they're part-time if they would even be you know working through the winter and then maybe coming back in that march time frame to work through that august when there's tall grass Yeah, I just, I don't really think we need another part-time person. That's just my own opinion. And, and I don't think they need a new truck. Uh, we need new trucks, places where people are working more so than just driving around the blocks, putting miles on the vehicle, so. Sure, and understood, just remember, we're on the general fund only. So mm -hmm. if there's someone else in another fund that needs a truck completely, they're separate. I know, uh, but I don't want to buy five trucks. I want to buy, I want to know what trucks we own sure i asked for that list were you able to get that from me on all the vehicles we own and their ages and their repair shapes and stuff like that um not sure you didn't get uh that. that's okay. in limbo hmm? that's in limbo <clears throat> okay uh so that is, that is in limbo so if there ends up not being a part-time person then there's not going to be a right. second uh, of this truck brought in here right so but if, if it comes to a point in time where you know it's a council's pleasure that you know we still need work in the city and we need more than what we're doing with our current part-time person then that person would be the need to help you know do more abatement stuff in the city mr kitko if you would uh explain the benefits of two part-time versus one full-time and would the two part-times be working at the same time? Mm -hmm. And if so, why would we need two trucks? They could just use the one. Uh, so yes, they would be working their typical uh, eight to four, seven to three, you know, the regular uh, working hours. If there were two, they wouldn't go in the same vehicle. They'd be going their separate ways to do whatever. Um, what was the first part that you had said about um what's the benefit of having oh two part two part two compared part to full time versus so full time. when you have a part-time person you are not paying them full medical full dental all the benefits that come along with it um so you know if you're looking at one full-time person you could be you know a hundred thousand for one full-time person with all their oprah's benefits and everything a part-time person doesn't garner all those benefits that typically a full-timer will get so you can get two full-timers or like if I got three seasonals, four seasonals, you know, you're paying them 20 to $25 an hour and they get zero benefits. So there, there's also an option if part-time doesn't seem to work, we could look at someone seasonally, but you know, sometimes nowadays we're having a hard enough time finding someone just to cut grass seasonally and, and do a good job. 
So we've kind of bumped some of our seasonal people, not our current seasonal, but changed the title into maybe a part-timer because you tend to get a better person. You're going to pay them a little bit more, and then they're, they're here sometimes year-round. I think I would agree with Councilman, Councilwoman Wright on only having the one part-time. Is there actually, in your opinion, enough for them, for two people to do during the summer months? Let me follow back up with you. I'll get with the planning director um, and follow up with some of the numbers and see what more was intent uh, from the uh, from Mr. Bridge on where what numbers they were getting. So I, let me do a little follow up with that and see if I can't get an answer for tomorrow's part of the work session. Okay, that would be appreciated. And thank you. Thank you. Um, again, on the, the garage building is a concern of mine. I didn't get a chance to look at the footing. I didn't know there was anything wrong with the footing. The last time I was down there, the block work looked good to me, and I understand it needs a new roof. I do not want to tear down a building that just needs a new roof. I think we could work out something. I want to go see the footing, and I don't want to make any kind of decision on that until I actually see it. and get an idea of how bad it is because you know I want to keep some of the oldness of our town and I think that would be a great place for our mayor's court and I don't know I just really think that that would be an, a new we got a new plaque coming in there the roads going to be improved we could fix that up and make a really nice mayor's court and I don't eat and it would still leave room for storage of vehicles but I don't want a little shed building for that I would leave, want to leave the block wall up I, I'm, I'm not sure if we're talking about the same we location. Are. We are definitely talking. Yeah, we're talking the garages in a row and the old block building yeah. at the front, right? And all yeah. that parking space there. It would be real easy to take one of the bay doors and put a door and a window there and have that be a dedicated um, courthouse and council area. And it just makes perfect sense to use it there because there's good parking, it's flat all over. It's in my mind it's usable as is but like i said i have not seen the footer so i don't know what that is and i'm just not keen on throwing away things i haven't seen at least a picture um, of or something yeah more welcome Sorry. to take you down but myself engineers and contractor mm -hmm. have been down there um I'm with sure. my 25 years of experience sure um yeah those the so those walls are cracked mm -hmm. um and it needs to be demoed mm -hmm. So, but I, I will take you down there for sure. Um, but that's where our experience comes in to really show, you know, what's what needs to be done. You know, when I go down with engineers, I don't make my decisions solely on on some of the things I know. But yeah, we've had contractors, engineers. I've had um, just multiple people down to look at it. Um, probably not a great place for what you're talking about parking, because one, it, 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 the well field doesn't change anything. But we only, that's our back way out of the water plant, and, and you really don't want to block the back access um, to the plant as well in case we got something going on and we have the block front, the blo the front we got issues with or something like that too. There's not a whole lot of room um, down there. And Mill Road um, will be for not through traffic coming soon. I expect it would be dead-ended, sure. Yep. Gotcha. Go ahead, Mr. Vaughn. Um, my my only thing, and how I yeah, I have to defer to your judgment when it comes to the buildings stuff down there because I don't. <clears throat> I'm not a building inspector or expert. I pay people to come and do that <laughs> whenever I have a question. But <clears throat> um, the only thing on the budget here that I would like to see is I I would like to see us keep that ending general balance around two million so if that means we've got a cut up in here as far as a part-time person the, the trucks some of the other stuff um, going dropping the the general fund balance that low um, especially with some of the growth and different things going on um, I'd like to see us squeeze some of this a little bit if we can um, and I don't know where you guys feel most comfortable doing that but 
to see if we can notes. at least keep that general fund balance. Kind of where we are this year. Yeah. Ending balance. Yeah. So I will look at a little bit tighter um, numbers to give you of where this is going to come in at, which is going to help us on the bottom. But between the revenue and the expenses, you know, we're Six hundred and sixty-three thousand different. So, um, do we have time to meet before council tomorrow mm -hmm. night? Come up with a couple ideas. Any other suggestions for the general fund? The chipper. Um, I really don't see the use of a really ginormous chipper like that. We're not a tree department, and um, you can get a really dandy trip chipper for like six thousand and I really think that would be a better expenditure of our money. Um we need a uh we right now we have a gravely chipper mm -hmm. that was I think new fifteen thousand back in the day. And I rebuilt it when I was a mechanic and uh we we need to get so just our lemon brush pickup our monthly we are now hauling our brush wholesale and we're running out of stockpiling room. So, and we do tons of our own tree work. So yes, we do have a bucket truck. We go around and do our own tree work uh, this fall. We have a lot to do in the old section of town. I know right now we have 10 or 12 trees uh, to remove in the curb lawns, all 18 <coughs> inch in diameter or larger, that we will be doing in house. Um, and typically each one of those is 1,200 to $2,000 a piece if we were to hire a company out. Right. So sharing this is parks, streets. We constantly get, um, trees down and the one we got now is well I think it's I've been here 20, almost 25 I was here before I got here and been been rebuilt twice and it it barely well we really don't use it we haul we haul full time we haul non chipped brush to behind the shelter and we're just out of room so, so we, where are these 15 trees? You said oh, they're oh, at the curb line? Yeah, they're in the curb line. Cause I thought the homeowners own those trees. They, they the are line. until they become diseased or a safety hazard or when we're going to trim up to get our height restriction on the curb and gutter over the street. And we do that and go, you know what? That tree is not <coughs> stable. Then we got to take it down. We're In the end, we're the ultimate responsibility to keep our right of way safe. But for just basic pruning, if you had a, a, a nice looking silver maple that just need trim, that is on the homeowner to do. Mm -hmm. Outside of um, doing the right of way clearing, which we do regardless. Right, but still the, the $50,000 shredder, and you know, I argued with this with Ron because he was on the street. But the truth of the matter is we have a million tree companies and they all have like five, $6,000 shredders at the best is what they have and it blows right into the back of their dump trucks. So I don't know why we need a $50,000 shredder. Um, I know all the tree companies mm -hmm. without naming them. Um, and I can tell you all their Vermeers, uh, they're not that cheap. Mm -hmm. I, I To try and find one that's not 30 years old, that's on its last leg for six. I'm not talking about a used one, a brand new one for 6000 Yeah, you won't find a commercial around. chipper for 6000 State big contract minimum right now is 32000 for a wood chipper. Right. For for that kind of chipper, for somebody who does trees 24-7, but we don't do trees 24-7. If we do, we're in the wrong business. That's not our job. I mean, yes, we need to do this and that, but it, we're not a tree trimming company, so I don't know why we would need a big commercial shredder. This isn't the biggest one, but when we do get into <clears throat> our tree work, mm -hmm. we have to do it professionally and commercially. We're not a residential, and I don't mean residential, we are professionals at what we do. So um, if I was to go buy a residential type of chipper, which that's kind of about what that is, um, we're not gonna get our production that we need to do. Um, I've never seen it. I mean, last year I was researching chippers galore to try and get a decent one. Um, and, you know, we have to put this in there in case, if I find one for 38,000 and we got 50 in there, that's great, but if there's some reason that we need to get an added safety piece, something like that, there's room for that. Um, but yeah, I, I would have to politely just disagree with a, a six thousand dollar chipper, you know, being for our for our professional way of doing the tree work that we do. Okay. 
Mr. Kiko, uh, go ahead, Mr. Bond. I just, is there, well, I have two questions. One, you said the brush is getting to where you just don't have any more room for it. What's the plan on all the brush that's building up? Um, well, eventually we would probably bring some of it through the chipper if we got one. Um, we were considering if something doesn't happen is to bring in like CNS tree service and you have to bring a tub grinder in mm -hmm. and then have them grapple it in and try and just give us some storage room back here. Cause it's more made for um, dirt, you know, building the land out, but you know how brush is, you start burying that and it decays. Now you got sinkholes. So yeah, our goal at one point was to try and bring a tub grinder and it's like, you know what, we need to be just chipping this on site instead of trying to use a backhoe with our clamshell, load it in the bed of the truck. We haven't done it yet, knock on wood, you know, bust back windows out, bust things out of the, the back. We haven't done it, but it's just not <coughs> conducive to what we do. Is, um, is there an opportunity when you go to do these trees, is there, is there any cost savings to renting i mean because you can rent a, a good size chip a mm -hmm. bigger chipper than what we can afford to buy mm -hmm. is there is there any is, does that cause too many problems to just rent one for the few times that we chip and have um savings yeah we have we have we have looked into that it's when so like right now i know we have 10 or 12 12 trees in the old section of town if i knew we could go straight through and get them all at once and get it because a week's rental is i think five to six grand Mm -hmm. um, about five grand. So you got that week's rental. I don't know if we can, with everything else that goes on, to get 12 trees. So we're probably going to need a two, three month, three week rental because we're not like a tree company. That's our sole job. Right. You know, they're going to have to, typically fall, we got leaf season too. And fall is the best time to cut these trees down, fall and winter. Mm -hmm. So um, we have looked into rentals, um, more so on the stump grinding side. Yeah. Because we'll go get 25 stumps and you can send one person out to go do all the stump grinding. Yeah. But Chipper on the other hand, we we looked at renting and trying to figure out how can we schedule it all, get it all done. Our plan never comes together when you're trying to do a tree company's job all right in a row. But it's something I can take a look at again, see you know, if there's a month rental and we can get everything done within a month and see what that costs. Yeah. They they would do that and generally they'll mm -hmm. you know, they'll work a little bit more on their pricing. Um, when you do the it, it is a little bit better with the yeah. longer term, but yeah. I'll check into a, a, a monthly chipper rental. And then, you know, and if the weather doesn't permit to go in and do some of that, they can take it behind the thing and just start chipping the brush that's built up mm -hmm. and still utilize that time. But um, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Kiko. The fifty thousand dollars for that chipper is that paid out of one? Fund or is that spread over a couple? I believe it's three. Or three. Three different. Fund. Yeah, two. It's shared. Shared. And that's park, the, parks is one half of trees, and our streets is the other part. Okay, and that's fifty thousand total. Not total 50, twenty five in one, twenty five okay. in another. Okay. We got thirty on it right now. Till yeah. we got the quote, unless it's changed. What is it? Thirty. All thirty and thirty. Yeah. Okay. And and do you have any idea what? I know, I'm sure you've been looking at pricing. What can we get one for that's close to the top, but not the top? So we were we were right about the, the middle. When I was looking at state term last year, the chipper we were going to buy, because we, we had this in the CIP budget last year, and it was 32000 <clears throat> We go to finalize the, the deal, <clears throat> and he goes, um, parts issues, getting materials. 48000 ended up being the final price, because, and it was going to be six months out. So we decided to not make that purchase at that time just because of the jump. Because then that means I had, I think, thirty or 40000 in CIP budget, and I wasn't coming back here to ask for more just based on um, waiting on supply chain issues. So now I'm thinking that, you know, hopefully the pricing has come down a little bit, and, um, but I haven't looked in a little less than a year. You know, I've got some budgetary numbers out there, but nothing where I'm in there and got, got the, a complete package. Is it possible to get one a year or two old? There's always, there's always that um, opportunity. And when that's in there like that, it's just anything over $5,000 has to go through budget and CIP. Mm -hmm. So if we found a Vermeer 1100 XL 
which is just about, I think, a size or two below normal tree companies. And they said, hey, we found a couple year old one, five, five years old, uh, you know, 30,000. That, that might be the deal. It might be possible to do that, you know. We're not set against, we, you know, we buy trucks that are used, but there's some that it was um, someone who, they just drove it around, like an old farm truck. You know, the owner just drove that diesel around, didn't pull wagons, didn't do nothing. It's an immaculate shape, but you look at the rest of the equipment and it, you know, wasn't nice. So yeah, we're, all, we're into, uh, you know, buying some used, but it's gotta be like our back truck. It has to be in good enough shape because we don't want to inherit problems. Thank you. Sure. <clears throat> one, one last question on that chipper. Do we have room to store that inside or is that gonna be something that would have to be outside? No, it'd be inside. Okay. Ready? Okay. We are going into the street construction fund. Our revenue sources we'll talk about is our motor vehicle license and gasoline tax. Then we have the $100,000 transfer in from the general fund. Under expenditures, wages in the street department, benefits come to $277,454. Street department, let's go look at things in there. We have one, two. So I kind of split them up. We have a quarter of um, service director, how we wage in there. We have a new seasonal we want to do, put in. We have 100% for the public work super, supervisor. We have the mechanic shared a quarter. He's also in the other funds. Street maintenance, um, half of rural, and a part of a seasonal. There are quite a few that come to the 191 wage up here. And then all their benefits come to 277. So that is adding another seasonal in the street department. Training and travel, CDO um, reimbursement and training for those, 2,500, same as this year. Under the contractual, actually brought that down a little bit, 193,575. Office supplies, materials, 40,500. Capital of 92,000. That for the street department is what we just talked about. The other half of the wood chipper, a new utility truck, dump truck, or tilt trailer. Comes to 92. That brings the street construction expense to $607,029 under this year's budget. And with an ending balance of 73979 Do we have questions on that one? Anything for the street? What, <clears throat> what do we do to, to get this? balance, ending balance to the street department, the at least back up to 100000 The revenue source is just so limited. We get a little bit of motor vehicle license. The, the state gas is our main. Other than that, it's supplemental from the general fund. There isn't any other revenue source for the street fund. My history from being here that long is the street, like you said, these are numbers, unless there's a gasoline tax uh, raised, it stays flat no matter what the expenses cost. So over the years, like in 2000, 2001, um, when I first got here, hardly had any equipment. They rolled 80s dump trucks. So we bought the 015 or 2550. We bought the 01 International IH. Still have both of those. So um, then we bought the uh, backhoe that was in 94. The new backhoe came in 2015. So we almost got to build up, build up, go make that purchase, and then build up, build up, make the purchase. Um, the, the transfer in, which is 100000 started last year, if um, not everyone knows, was an extra 100000 to put on street repairs on top of the street levy. So we had put that in again this year to do 100000 on top of um, that, that right there. So yeah, there's no additional revenue 
um, unless there's a gas tax increase. So we just you know live with what we got in the, the street fund unless uh, it's something that could be shared between water, wastewater streets that does help out some some uh, backhoe repairs. We split those all throughout because it does everything. So that's the hard thing about the street department. Well, it looks like next year you're going to be in the red. Well, it depends on. Because you only got you only got you only got uh, just under seventy four thousand dollars left to start at the end of this year, or 25. So in 26, when you do the budget well, in, in 25, you're gonna be in the red in 26 and start out. Scroll up. I believe it's because we have um, the capital, okay. With the new street sweeper, we brought in the revenue for, which is a debt, and then we expensed it out. So that was like an in and out, just a, a booking. So the only other, let's see what our other expenses are. In that maintenance of infrastructure of 140, um, you can see it's been typically smaller, yeah. but the 100,000 of it is that street repair that we utilize. So this 100,000, if we're not, <coughs> we haven't spent it this year, did we? Mm -hmm. So that's gonna increase that by 100,000. Because that is in the... Yeah, we're using the, it. Oh, we are using it this year? Oh, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Um, we can look at that some more, but it is a, a hard one. Usually where we always save is capital, if we try to hold off another purchase. What, um, I guess what work isn't getting done that we need another seasonal person? Let me... Where was your... Make sure I got it on the right one. We put a new seasonal when we were working with Mr. Bridge. Yeah, we have uh, we have our cemetery seasonal, and then we have our David. Yeah, he. It's David Green. Green. Yeah, and then Larry. So we had two. We have two seasonals. Is it adding a third? It's putting twenty thousand for the new one that we didn't have this year. Twenty thousand for the what, ma'am? The new seasonal. For a seasonal. For next year. Yeah, but I'm trying to, yeah, the tip, typically it's what we cost because they come in around March and leave usually um, November-ish. They don't work the full year. Let me double check to see if that's a duplication. Okay. okay. Yeah, that might be. That one might be, definitely. I know we always see the ending balances of how much money we have, but we don't look at these individual funds and that one is going to wind up at 73979000 next year. That's a little low, I think, for the street department. I think it, it, if they can tighten their belt a little somewhere, you know, uh, 20000 and get it closer to 100000 Can you go up to maintenance of infrastructure real mm -hmm. quick? Yeah, so we've been doing 24, 20. So that was a duplication. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so the hundred thousand is for road repairs, mm -hmm. and if you drop the forty to twenty, that's going to put it more so about where it normally is. Which one, Howie? Which that, one? that one that you're at. So if that was one twenty, because we're averaging twenty four, fourteen, twenty two. So if you made that one twenty, that'll that'll put twenty thousand. Yeah. And then we can look at the part time seasonal. That's another twenty. Yeah. It's going to get you get us up over a hundred. We remove the. Let me just take out the part time one right now. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to take out the other seasonal? We'll double check it for tomorrow. Okay. But I'm, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that's a duplicate because we already had our seasonal covered this year. Yep. Okay. And does the seasonals, do they work? Like if you hire a seasonal for a uh, street department, can they work over in the cemetery or? cutting grass or really? place you need them or are they specific to the department to hire into um they've they've gone they've gone out and helped other people but typically our one uh seasonal that we had this year in the streets not counting the one in cemetery first thing he do go out and water the flowers every day or every other day and then he he'd go do the trash um we see a huge improvement from what everybody's talking about is the trash so he picks up all the trash on Main Street, Church, Lake. You know, he drives around and gets all the trash, not just the b barrels, but things laying on the ground. And then, uh, then he hops on a mower, and his day is 
you know, pretty much mowing unless someone says, hey, going to cut a tree. I need someone to go do limbs. He'll put the mower away and then he'll go do that. Or um, we're handing flyers out or something for the water department, then he might go do that. But, you know, typically he's doing, that's his routine day in and day out. And usually they're only doing 30 hours a week. 30 hours? Yeah. It, it, like uh, the one guy this year was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That way his wa the watering would, would be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. A lot of times we get that carry, except for this year with a drought, um, we'd have some of our weekend duty people do some watering. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. <coughs> State Highway. Our revenue source there is motor vehicle license and a portion of the state gas, very small portion. In this budget for State Highway, we just we don't have no salaries, just a little bit of the contractual expense and materials and supplies that we can um, spend out of the State Highway fund, and that one stays real consistent. We've been in the 80s for a little while. Um, <clears throat> how we will also work on a project and save we save up for it like we did here in. 2023. We had a very large project that we saved up for. Any questions on? This is a general question, sure. but <clears throat> who determines how much that state gasoline tax that we get for the highway? I get it from the state of Ohio, so I don't know how they're... How they determine that? Mm -hmm. so I'm just thinking as we grow more traffic, I would think that number should increase. I don't know, but... I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's, to, it's not based just on our speedway sales. I mean, if it was only on, or in Marathon, we would yeah. get that much, but. Right, yeah, I'm just wondering where that I, comes from, but. That may I, be I don't know another, if it's a population time. thing, yeah, I'm or. Curious to, I know the state highway is based on our linear mile, or our mileage, we have a state routes. So if they say you got two miles of state route, you're gonna get that two mile rate. Whatever they deem that. Yeah. Regardless of whether you have 10,000 a day or 30,000 a day or whatever going through. Right. Interesting. And we don't spend too much on state highway um, unless we got just a little bit of work to do. But when I was building the funds up for the 235 repaving, we have to pay 20%. So 571 is going to need paid probably in you know 10 years, give or take. So then in 10 years, we'll have saved up our share. And in 2023, we did get a lot of the ARP funds that we were able to use for the project. So that was a nice revenue source. So that is our ending balance estimated for State Highway. No other questions? State permissive tax. That comes from the um, vehicle permissive tax revenue. That one, again, is another one that's real consistent on the revenue that we have and we do have um, one employee portion of it Make sure. a quarter of the mechanic and half of um, street maintenance girl he's in that expense and that one just usually balances out it grows a little bit every year we just maintain that and we got the Street improvement levy, and here's our levy money, real estate tax levy and homestead. We're estimating 137000 this year. That's pretty consistent since it's our levy. Expenditures are the auditor fees, anything that we can put in for maintenance of infrastructure, a little bit of asphalt. And again, that is another one that we build up and then start using and then we'll be building up again. That will come up a little higher. We didn't spend it. Yet. Any questions before we start into the fire? Police and fire, would you guys like a break? Is... <coughs> nope, we're going to keep going. Yeah. Then. Yeah. The uh, <coughs> interest balance for the street improvement levy fund that's getting pretty low, I think. Uh, it's probably the lowest it's been in years. We had a big, um, we used a lot 
this year, maintenance, and, and how he monitors it real well. He'll use whatever we, we can to get as much project done, and then he'll sit back and we'll wait and build it up again. So I'll give you a little bit of history. When we first put it in, we didn't have enough money <coughs> that first year of revenue, revenue. So we built it a couple years, went and did projects. Well then, um, I tried to take it to the last penny. So that 2000 is because I'm spending almost all the money that it brings in, I put it right back in roads. Um, so with that added $100,000 that comes in from the, from the general fund to street construction, then now I'm getting 200 and some thousand uh, to do the roads. So I just, is I'm not right now I'm not saving the levy, I'm using as much as I can of the levy. Because I, I don't, right now I haven't had to save up for a big specific project. Now if all of a sudden a $500,000 road project come up, um, uh, Washington Street, let's say, and I knew it was going to be that big, but we're not doing any other streets, we would save a couple years plus add some and then go do one big project. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're into the fire and ambulance. So our first fund is the emergency ambulance capital. Our revenue sources are real estate taxes and rollback from our levies. $34,000, 33000 $34,000 a year. Expenditures are just, uh, the last few years that we just paid the auditor fees that they charge us to collect the levies. And we have not used capital <coughs> except for in 2020 when we bought that ambulance and we're saving for the next ambulance. We anticipate with this fund balance growing by 34000 less our little bit of expenditures that we should have our um, ambulance almost all paid for by the time we get the contract in and it builds it's what did you say chief three years down the road three or four be less, but we're looking at now they're now they're saying anywhere from a year and a half to two. okay so we might have a little bit of a loan that we'll need at that time but we'll have the majority of the money saved in this capital yeah uh i heard the same words when we ordered the fire engine <coughs> That we may have a little bit of a loan, like two hundred thousand dollar loan. No. But if I'm not mistaken, isn't that just about going to be paid for, and we get it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's we're what I was thinking. We're expecting the what? Twenty twenty six, early twenty twenty six. to have received the engine. Okay. We yeah. just and had our first build meeting two months ago for the uh, engine, and Chief Gallagher received our change order. Uh, just Couple weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, after what we changed over for that bill meeting, and we still, at that time, we were still almost four thousand dollars under budget. Okay, so if we do the same thing with the medic, just kind of thinking out loud, that the medic will probably be paid for by the time it gets there. Close. I don't, I don't want to say that. For sure. we, we may we still have to have a loan because they cost a whole lot more. One of the big differences with the medic to, from the medic to the engine. Um, it say we, we get a lock in price for that medic and when they get for some reason due to the day or whatever our bill for time gets pushed back then they're at that time say they're starting to, to use the next year's chassis and that next year's chassis has a has built up or price wise we're going to end up paying that extra price for mm -hmm. that new chassis so it's it's not quite the same as the engine but pretty much um, but we should, we, we'll be close. Uh, it's not going to be like we don't have to pull out the, you know, uh, a half or three quarter, you know, and, and finance that. Right. And what do you anticipate the new medic will be just for the medic? Price wise? Yes. We were looking at what, 320, I think it was. Close to 320. Yeah. 320. 320. Okay. Thank you, sir. Like I was saying the other night, the medic that's the new medic we bought two years ago was 178 without the load system, and it's by that same medic right now is over 300. And I think it was like 360. And the one that we just get getting priced is at 325. Because What's we're not buying that same medic, sir. Okay. We went we went and looked at the high side, which is that Braun. We also looked at the real low side, which is a different company. Then we looked at the middle, middle, which is a company made named Medics, mm -hmm. um, which is also owned by the parent company of the same with the Braun. Okay. 
So it's basically like buying a step-down version of, of that Bronc medic. Still a great medic. It's the same medic that we that we spec'd out and helped uh, Elizabeth Township purchase when we were still out of Elizabeth Township. So we know what we're looking at. We know what we're buying. Okay. All right. Thanks, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Emergency ambulance operating, revenue sources, um, real estate tax levy, homestead, and we also have our ambulance services that um, we receive for their runs. So our estimated revenue is 522000 for next year. The wages, um, we did put in, all the wages have the increases that we're going to talk about. And there is an estimated dollar an hour that we had, are going to discuss for the fire department and ambulance. So that is why this number is a lot larger than this year. With that, their wages, um, training and travel, we were able to reduce a little bit. Under contractual, up a little bit more. Hardware and software was going to have an increase in maintenance of equipment. Um, the chief and Mr. Gallagher, they, um, we came up with some more expenditures there that they wanted to have that increase. Dispatching uh, fees are going up a little bit. So that number, 129500 is a little jump from this year. Under materials and supplies, we kept that about the same. We have no capital in the budget this year. They did get a lot of grants last year, and they're very well equipped, not spending any. That brings the expenditures to 816000 with an ending balance of 174. Have any questions on the ambulance operating? We'll do fire capital, real estate taxes, <coughs> and that are F revenue sources, 68000 With that, we have auditor fees, and the rest we're saving for the fire truck. We have an ending balance here of 473000 So with the fire truck coming, and this is 2025's budget, we have one more year of $60,000. we will be about 525000 or so saved for that fire truck. So almost all of it paid, which is nice. Fire operating is pretty much the same with the revenue sources from our levies. Homestead um, grants as they come in, we'll, we'll add those. Revenue is 256000 The fire wages are at 148000 Benefits come to one sixty five. Training and travel is reduced a little bit there, 6,500. Contractual did go up. Again, that's the same. Most of these expenditures are split 50-50. Cost of the building, cost of the maintenance, between the ambulance operating and the fire operating. Materials and supplies, 48,000. Again, no capital expenditures needed this next year. For a total of $346,322 on expenditures, with an ending balance in the fire department of $286,000. <coughs> no questions on the fire? Mr. Obama. I know we've talked about your uh, storage needs out here. Is that in here somewhere? No, sir, we're going to go ahead and take care of that out of this year's budget. We are going to order, uh, put an order for the, um, Carpenter is our, is our jack of all trades. Um, he does all, well, he's basically, we do everything in-house. Like the floors, the ceilings, everything. We bought the materials and did, did the work ourselves. Uh, we've already uh, online to order um, siding for the, for the garage. We found out it was actually cheaper to do siding and painting it uh, so we're going to do that and we're also submitting the paperwork uh, that we need to to the county uh, to have electrical done captain Parker is also a master electrician with the with right path high voltage uh, maintenance supervisor and so we'll be doing the work for that and then we'll have uh, 
kind of come in and do the inspection on it, of course. And then AES will come in and wet paper. That's half empty. It'll have its own meter and um, it's already got a panel, but uh, it'll have its own meter and service. Okay. Hey, very good. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. <laughs> That's the same question. Oh, I was going to ask, um, on the gas and the electric service, we're talking power, right? It just seems that's a bit high. Do we have LED lights here? Yes, yeah, all of them are LEDs. Oh, Again, not all of them. Not all of them. Uh, we'll be missing the bay, right, Cap? Again, Captain Carpenter went through and replaced everything inside the station. Yeah, it's an easy job to, to switch them out, so yeah. Can we Sometimes. Still, well, <laughs> yeah, some of them can be. Uh, the, the, bay is our next, the, the bay is our next project for right. this year. Is trying to get the lighting and uh, speaking with uh, Mr. Kitko, it was going to be our best options to do with the bay. Mm -hmm. as far as, uh, leaving the ceiling tiles out there, taking them out, that type of thing. Okay. Well, hopefully, yeah, we can get that done and the prices will go down. I know those, I wasn't working here at the time. I think it's clear back to Brad, Archie. Mm -hmm. I helped them get help get the lights that were out there now. Those are high outputs, mm -hmm. like T five efficient it's, fluorescence. Mm -hmm. They're a lot better than what was up there before those. Mm -hmm. So because back then I did the same thing at Buffalo. <laughs> LED still back then was still really expensive. Right, yeah. So we're even putting up LED um, strip crystallized to those they have Awesome. I like that. <coughs> That's good. Good thinking guys. Go to the next is Click Records Computer Fund. And what this this is a new fund that we started with the mayor's court. A portion of the fines and court costs um, are going into the fund to pay for the software that they will have renewals and fees for the support of the computer. And there's thirty eight hundred dollars ending in that balance. Same with the court computerization fund. The other part, three dollars per fine that goes in, and, and then also splits the fee for their software. So it's a kind of a just a small retaining. We have not had to spend anything yet. I might still get one by the end of the year. If not, it'll be on the end. And that money will be spent. Health levy. Our real estate and rollbacks is our revenue source for our health levy. This one, after I paid the fees for the auditors that collect it, we try to give them back. They get everything that we, we collect. So that balance will always be as close to zero as I can run it. I actually caught it one time. Um, it's just the, the revenue might be off a couple hundred dollars, so I, I kind of budget as close as I can. That check goes to the health department at the end of the year. We used to have a nurse that came in and did like wall baby checks and give shots and things like that. Does that no longer happen? I haven't heard of anything <clears throat> this whole year. I'm not aware outside of they doing some of their stuff for the cleanup and um, do they, does the health department come in here and do any kind of thing? I don't know if they, because I know they've been struggling for some personnel, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if that's something they still do or don't do at all and everything, you know, is up, go up to the health department. I wondered about that the last time there was a health levy passed and it was like, what do they do for our town now? Um, not sure, I know. Oh, do they go to, maybe to the church? Like once a month. The health clinic, they do it at one of these churches down here. Just one clinic once a month for a Thanks couple hours? A yeah. And they do vaccines. Yes. I forgot vaccines. They do the plumbing stuff. They do the all the food service things for New Carlisle. Um, all the health inspections for New Carlisle. If there's any kind of things throughout the town that um, is a health issue inside the house, hoarding things like that, they get involved. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. That's good to know. Thank you. You asked Kathy why there were some funds that have zeros. I, I left them in here for oh, history. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you can see <coughs> how we got um, our federal grant money. But moving forward, it'll start. I'll start that. It'll fall off. Yeah. It'll fall off. Exactly. Because there's not going to be anything in that fund this year. Police levy, police income tax. Yay. Um, as I 
believe Mr. Lindsay did a lot of the work to uh, develop that revenue back in oh. 2015. I say, what did I do? <laughs> went out and, and so <clears throat> what we get from the levy is 500, 600. It's up to 700 thousand dollars a year. Those are actuals, so I budgeted 700, just a little low. Um, out of that, the police had their own budget, their own gas, electric, um, sheriff's contract is the biggest one. That contract is always put in at the highest amount of the contract. And if you look at history, we've never had the sixth deputy, or even um, sometimes five. Full, I think we just full did family. Yeah, full, full family deputy. So that number's there if it ever changes and we, we hit that contract amount, but it will always go back into this fund balance. For capital, for what do we have for police? I believe it's uh, equipment upgrades and a generator for the substation for 101 building. So that's their capital budget, $65,000. How many... Uh Mr. Kiko, how many deputies do we have now? We are at five. Four. Oh, no, I didn't do I police. I can tell you how many water mains we got, but... Um, <laughs> we got five. It's five. Yeah, it's five. Yeah, it's five. Okay. And we approved that sixth one back in March or something, and we weren't able to get it, and is that going to continue to be the case? Is that... Uh, I so, didn't get any information from Mr. Bridge when he was working on that contract, but something about was there needing to be a full-time sergeant to run it? Oh, there might have been something where once once in their their contract, once you go to six deputies, you're required to have a uh, sergeant at the location of that place. Well, don't we have a sergeant? Of house. I mean, yeah. We have a sergeant in charge out here, so why isn't he out here? Well, right now, yeah, right now he's not required, but he's a sergeant. I think over all of the roads, not just New Carlisle. Mm -hmm. And from what I understand, and I'll jot a note to look into, I think you have to have a dedicated sergeant. So then I don't know if then is that a cost. So that's, that's something I'll have to answer. look into. He, the sergeant that we have out here, he is the sergeant of over all contractual. Uh, deputies for Clark County, and they're debating whether or not he can fill that position as a dedicated sergeant here and still be that contractual deputy there, or do they have to actually put a, a dedicated sergeant in the front office? The only reason that's what I'm talking to deputy slot. To my knowledge, we haven't signed any contract for deputies yet, have we? No, not not for 2025 yet. That's on my list to start working on. So for our budget part right now, I just put in the same that we had this year for, for the numbers. When we get the contract and, and if it's before we vote on this, we, we'll get that updated. If not, again, it's a not to exceed. Um, and I explained what the capital was. So our ending balance for expenditures is 912600 with a ending balance of 475117 And this expenditures will come in a lot lower, so that number will be a lot lower. <coughs> And general bond retirement, the next two are our debt payments, revenue from our um, levies, and our transfer in for the general fund helps support it. And then we pay our various purpose bonds that's been going on for almost 15 years. I'll find out when, or I've got a paper that says when that one's paid for. And that ending balance is 3,800. I only put in enough from the general <coughs> fund to supplement it. Twin Creeks, um, same thing. Infrastructure bond assessments is our revenue source. A little bit of the general fund to transfer in. We pay our debt payment and we have 9400 Now if I go over to my debt payment sheet, the various purpose bonds will be um, 
expiring in 2035. The Twin Creeks will be in 2026. <coughs> we just got the new street sweeper. That is for five years. It'll be done in 2029. Um, and while we're in this, our YMCA water sewer project will be uh, paid off this year, this next budget year, 2025. The wastewater treatment plant improvement will be paid off in 2043. Water meter upgrade project, 2035. And the big one, the new water plant will be done in 2026. And we'll get to those water funds and sewer funds to show what the debt payments are. So that is the debt. The street sweeper bond is new, so we have transfer in for revenue for it and its debt payment. And we'll have a $1,800 ending balance. And that gets us to the water operating. Do we want a break? Are we? I just have a one to know how far you guys want to get because we have water, sewer, Cemetery, pool, and um, and uh, cemetery, pool, water, and yeah, wastewater. Water. So we have four funds left, but I also know we have a what a potential um, I wouldn't say lengthy executive session. It's not going to be five minutes. So I didn't know how far council wanted to do tonight to do an executive session and then finish <coughs> the other four funds tomorrow. Do you want to go to eight o'clock and then go to executive session? and that would give us another 30 minutes and possibly we could knock this out in two nights okay yeah. and then we can come back with questions and maybe tweak some numbers tomorrow yeah. when we meet is yeah. that good all right we're going to go yeah. into water water operating um and for the new ones the water the sewer the pool and the cemetery are enterprise funds and that's technically they're not to be supported by the general fund they're a user revenue source so if we need money and we can't cut expenditures that's when rates go up the rate discussion gets talked about so our income right now is um, delinquent utility charges water charges that's the main water bill and a miscellaneous we're estimating it at a million and eighty thousand dollars Expenditures for um, the water department is $346,961. That is for superintendent, two operators with license, and we are requesting, we have half of our utility clerk. She gets paid out of water and sewer, a quarter of the mechanic. And we are holding a position for that second um, plant operator with license. So we have right now three, and we're looking for a fourth. That's included in this, these numbers. With the wages and the benefits, it brings it to 565000 The other, um, I highlighted here, license bonuses and standby. Pay. Those are increases that are new this year. Mm -hmm. They'll be new coming up. And they'll be in the water, mm -hmm. wastewater, and that's another um, amount that is included in this 346000 But it adds around, if you can see right here, about $37,000, $38,000 to the wages to have those license bonuses and standby pays. And I have it broken down in the wastewater also. Training and traveling is the same amount as this year. Um, it kind of fluctuates, so we just kept that higher number. If we if we needed it there, if it's not, it it won't get spent. And that's mainly that CDL testing line item. Under contractual, we actually were able to reduce that three hundred thirty two thousand two hundred. Um, we don't have as much maintenance of infrastructure, and we had a lower number in our original budget, but part of our supplementals we had to add and request for additional money. It's mostly in infrastructure and maintenance of equipment. You'll see those in the supplementals, things that break or come <coughs> to our attention that needs extra maintenance, <coughs> not in our original budget. But we're down to just a normal amount that kind of reflects what we've been normally spending. So that's why the contractual amount is lower. Under materials and supplies, it's just a little bit higher than this year. 
runs 90, 70, 70. Okay. Capital. For the wastewater, and then I'll come back. Okay. Okay. Capital. You're coming back. Water right? department. <laughs> he has a chlorine scale system and then a closed main break trailer. And those can be explained by Mr. Kitko when he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of oh, bread. he's the one that wanted the break. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a question on that, capital, he'd be glad to name it on his way back. Um, now we have our debt for the water plant. There's the OWDA, the Tecumseh, and this huge amount is our water plant. Um, that's what has um, been very difficult and fun to manage, but we have been doing it. So that gives us um, one million two hundred seventy-nine thousand in the expenditures, with our carryover balance that is coming in a lot better. We're looking at right now it's coming in at one hundred fifty-four thousand on an ending balance. That's the water. We go to the sewer. Wastewater charges, same as the water plant. We have the consumer charges, we have delinquent, and we have miscellaneous. We did have extra rate increases in effect for the wastewater plant, and um, it's bringing a little bit more revenue. 1325000 is what we're estimating to pay for the wastewater. Now, wages with the license bonuses and standby pay coming in at 405000 in the wastewater, they were able to get two new employees that are working their way up. So we have the service director, a quarter of his. We have full-time superintendent. We have a lab technician who is new. We have another lab technician that's new. We have a wastewater maintenance with license who we've had for a few years. We share the mechanic again, a quarter of his, half of our utility clerk. And we still have our seasonal Scott Strayer, bless his heart, who carries a license to help us run that plant. The, we had two people retiring, Scott Strayer, and we had Jeff Cleffinger. They all had license along with Carrie. Then we got Mr. Pop with a license. Without, I believe, and this is where Mr. Kitko can fill in, a three license, we can't run the plant. So they did get two more. They're just learning. So we have Scott helping us to, to stay there and keep him and, and Mr. Pop and Carrie. So with that payroll, it's $405,000 to <coughs> keep that water plant up and going. With benefits, we're at $602,000. Training and travel, um, we increased the CDL because we have the extra staff that will we'll be paying for his CDL training. Contractual, about the same. We actually were able to reduce that a little bit in this next budget, 338000 Materials and supplies, just a little higher on this end. Capital, 182500 That is for a grit classifier. And then we have the shared service garage. A new service garage shared. Those two figures are in there. How we will be able to update a little bit more on any of these types of detail. But let's go to the debt, OWDA, OPWC, the YMCA portion, um, wastewater treatment improvement loan. These are all paid off now. The clarifier, the influent building, miscellaneous. Our estimated expenditures would be $1,244,000. Revenue is more. These are good funds. And we have an ending balance growth going to 945000 I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go to pool. I think we probably ought to wait to how he comes back. Yeah. I don't you know got what questions on water and wastewater? Yeah. Okay. So, I might I be some like questions. To break. I'd like to stand up. Yeah. Move down a bit. My only question, Mrs. Harris. Yes. The under the water, does that make you nervous at all? The about two hundred thousand difference. To be honest with you, I think the water is a, a topic of concern, and we discussed in our budget 
about looking at the rate increase. And, and the reason is if we wait too long and that balance gets too low, it's going to be hard to catch up. You don't want to wait forever for a rate increase and then have to put a big one in. Um, small increments helps maintain cost of living, cost of expenditures. The water treatment plant is in very good shape. Wastewater plant is needing repairs, but we're building that fund. So that's my opinion on the numbers. Where are we at? Um, he was asking about the balance for the water if I was nervous about it. And I said we, we've had multiple discussions about possibly when and and how much of a yeah. increase that may need so, to be put Something, in place. yeah, to get us through till that July payment of the um, the last loan payment because it's, it's uh, $216,000 a year is the loan payment that comes off. So really in 2027 is the first year that that will not be on there. But then as you can see how long it will take to, you know, let's say you didn't spend in that 216, it's going to take a couple years to build it up, not even spending any of it. Um, and two, we're, we're just starting to find ourselves uh, finding more and more breaks to go fix, things to do. And that's not necessarily water main breaks, but valves. And again, I got two million something to do some of this work in here, but we do probably need to look at something. I know uh, softening had come up at one point. Yes, please. Yeah, I don't know where that's coming at. Um, so I don't know, I need a little detail on the softening and maybe I can explain what's going on and what, what we want to do. So um, we could break that down if I've already answered your question a little bit. Yeah, I, you, my question was just, I just asked Mr. Harris, you know, yeah. because I see that deficit there and it's, it concerns me a little bit. I didn't know if it concerned her a little bit or not. Oh. So she said yes. And um, Yeah, yeah, no, it, it does. I didn't know gallon, you know, what what is that rate increase to bridge that gap? Is it um, break out the gallons that we sell or whatever? Yeah, so so basically I take the total, you know, I take the total revenue that we got and um, divide it by the number of people or the households, and then I go down to the month, and I'll have a number for tomorrow. I, I thought I had it with me because I had already figured. I already had my total for some softening stuff, but um, I had a rate, and I thought I had it um, with me. So I will bring it to tomorrow's. Yeah, that's fine. To kind of see what that might be enough to bridge. Okay. Yeah, and thank you. And we had that supplemental, a couple supplementals this year with the brakes and the, the big motor and um, <laughs> some things. So our expenditures in 2024 increased from our original budget, which is pulling off our ending balance, of course, too. So um, you never know. I mean, they are running into so many issues with the, the water lines that you don't yeah, want to. It doesn't seem like they're usually cheap repairs when it's something that. Uh, well, no, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I can give you just a real short, just the other day, we have our water tower down. It's under an asset management plan, which is the best thing we've ever done. So we pay $58,000 a year. But this year, so they come out, they drained the water tower, we drained the water tower, they got in, cleaned it, uh, touched up repairs, painted it, and then we started filling last week. I mean, it's 1.7 million, so it takes us uh, our, almost a week to fill that tower. Um, so but we went to go open our valves to start filling it last Thursday, and one of our valves there at Scarf, which is not old, on, in 1974, um, wouldn't reopen. And we've been operating this valve every year about four or five times a year we, as we exercise it so they yanked it out we put a new 12 inch so just to put one 12 inch valve and two couplings was six grand um, come to find out it was an old butterfly valve which is not ideal so we are paying for some um, I don't want to call it bad infrastructure decisions but it just was you don't put butterfly valves in on your main lines it just doesn't it doesn't work so I'm just telling you when I'm doing these projects they get the best because I want someone 20, 30 years from now not having to pay for this stuff down the road. What, what type of <laughs> valve did you put in, do you say? I, we put in a gate valve, gate? a resilient wedge gate valve, yeah, which okay. was well in before that in 74. So we don't have to look you up at Bancrest and say, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> everything, we, everything we do is documented. We're well. I wanted to bring you, you a couple questions. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Uh, 
I noticed in here there's a couple of places for chemicals. Mm -hmm. Is that water testing chemicals or is that something else? Uh, that would be our chlorine for disinfection. That would okay. be our polyphosphates for our corrosion control. And then um, potassium permanganate, which uh, goes in for help um, oxidizing yeah. iron out of the water. So, yeah, that's all the chemicals we need to put the water out. Okay. What about lime removal? Because I think I heard you say or somebody said that our water is not so bad soft wise but it's the amount of lime we had in there so there's a potential because in our aquifer there is a chance to get a little bit because we're in a limestone mm -hmm. so you'll get a little bit of lime um, in there but there's no there's no like lime removal okay you know filters can filter some of it out mm -hmm. um, but because we take and filter all water or soften all water and then only um, 35% of our softened water goes back, or 35% of our raw, raw filtered water goes back in with our softened water. We don't have zero soft water here, mm -hmm. which no municipality does. Um, so we have to bring some of that raw water back in, and there's where you get it. And sometimes softeners will pull it out a little bit, mm -hmm. but you'll, you'll get that a little bit. And a little bit of calcium and magnesium buildup, maybe magnesium is your black. Sometimes you might find a little mm -hmm. black ring in the bowl, but that's ultra rare for us. It's real low. Um, you might find some calcium that, that oxidizes, and that's typically where you find your aerators. And you know, I've lived on all sides of town, and it's funny because towards uh, Northwood, not near as bad as it is South Scott's horrible, as compared to Ohio, which was okay, you know? And that's weird to me that different areas would have different, is it um, older underground pipes? Or? So the oldest is up this direction where you were, where it was fine. Yeah. Um, typically, it's gonna come down to your fixtures. Oh, what really? type of aerators were on it? That's what oxidizes it out. So if you never used an aerator on your faucet and it just poured out like a garden hose, <coughs> you would rarely get any deposits. Deposits come out when you aerate stuff. Okay. So it just depends on that, the, the, the type of fixtures. Um, uh, you know, was there a softener in the, in the house? So it's more of a personal thing instead of a city thing? Y yes. Okay. Yep. That's what I was asking. I, yeah, I do know there's people that take our soft water and take it to zero. Now, granted, they don't have to use as much salt, you know, to do because we get it almost all the, you know, we get it halfway there. Right. But, um, so yeah, you know, we run anywhere from 150 to 200 in our, in our hardness. Mm -hmm. 384 is what our raw is. So I pulled up Kettering, Dayton, Springfield, you name it, and they range anywhere from 147 to 160. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of sitting in that ballpark. I just think if we're going to do a, a rate increase possibly, you know, to add that extra dollars worth of softener and maybe it won't feel so bad to pay five. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's my thought. Yeah, yeah. Um, if we were to drop it from... Well, you don't like to get too much below 120. No. It's not so much a corrosiveness issue, it's a but taste. it's a taste. It's a slimy. You know, me, I'm I'm used to my slimy shower water at home. You know, you know, it doesn't take much. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it's something to consider. You know, if we're going to drop it a little bit, um, you know, to put that. But it's more back. It's back into the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. That's that's the key. went through wastewater. Um, is there any questions in the wastewater fund? Well, she had a, qu you had a question oh, about water. I, I just had a question about water. Do we add fluoride to our water? No. Thank you. I've had a couple constituents come to me and be like, I saw the science that came out recently, you know, and I know that science has been out for years. Yeah. And I'm like, recently? It's been around for like 20 some years. And they're like, can we get the fluoride taken out of our water? I'm like, do we even have fluoride in our water? There's natural occurring of about 0.2 milligrams per liter-ish or a little bit less. Yeah, our filters either. take that out. Okay. Um, so, yeah, but we do not. I think the closest one to us is Enon that does fluoridation. Hmm. Okay. I'll be happy to report that back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just wanted to report to them. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> So um, I can ju I'll bring tomorrow some little rate tiers and see what might be something that could uh, you know get us over the hump. Then you said you guys went through wastewater. Yeah. Next. <coughs> so the swimming pool. 
Um, that's a hard one to estimate also, but I kind of go through my history with that. Pool revenue, memberships, gate fees, concession, you know, you can have a hot day, you can have a rainy day, you can, it, it's just a, a hard one. So I keep the estimated revenue, um, it was close to this year. We had a really good year, we had a lower year, so that's, again, that we just watch it as we go through. Uh, month by month. Expenditures are the wages, a little bit of benefits, all the poor people are seasonal so there's no health um, insurance or those type of benefits. They have a little bit of uh, training expenditures. <coughs> the um, maintenance of facilities is, is the unknown. We have 10,000 in the budget. This year was 36, it was only 6, it was 11, it was 3. It was, <laughs> so we're at 10. Gas and electric, this one is probably going to eat up all of it. We had 13,000 the year before, but then we had seven. Depends on how warm they want to put that heater on in the pool. And that makes that little dial just spin around pretty fast. Um, so contractual, we put in 39,500. Materials and supplies, we were able to reduce that to 35,000. We have no capital. The one that we have this year was the gazebo, but it also had a grant to supplement it. So we have an ending balance of $1,000. And again, I only put in enough general fund to supplement to get that in the black. And then that is one, as soon as the pool season starts up, if they don't hit any big repairs this year, it should do good and if the weather's good. <laughs> so that's where. Is any questions on that? Yes. Do we have something to lock the heat? So, you know, if it's supposed to be, I don't know what it's usually at, but like 90. And <coughs> can we lock it at 90 so that it can't be turned up higher? Oh, usually it's usually it's not. I mean, I think it's... Was that <coughs> just this year because we had a change of personnel or... Something? No, um, and, it, and it all depends. Um, there could have been a price hike in, in the gas. Mm -hmm. No, typically we set it at... 83 okay but like this year being the drought and as hot as it was a lot of the time that boiler doesn't even run yeah um it, it doesn't run at all so if we get a cold june or something like that that's when you see it but no it doesn't go over that um there's guidelines that that are not law but you should strictly you should highly follow and it tells you for swimming for swimmers um, for babies, you know, try to keep that anywhere between 81 and 83 degrees mm -hmm. at a minimum. Well, I think some other pools are, are saving money by not making it warm. You know, I've been reading about all the cold pools around and, you know, because our pool is expensive, I wondered if maybe a couple degrees dropping might help our bills on that. I was just curious. Dropping it to probably 80, 81 from 82 to, eight, from 82 to 83. I mean, you're going to get a little bit, but we will get those complaints oh, sure. big time and and it's not so much the kids we lose a lot of paying customers from the adults that's mm -hmm. where we get that from mm -hmm. i understand that but i just want to keep our pool going that's all so. yep. and uh this this was an off year 2024 was an off year for the pool mm -hmm. um we were already looking into next year as we go you know i do have the former pool manager here and we're going to look at some things. So this year was an outlier. Um, things, you know, obviously could have been better, but we will make sure this next year that we, you know, don't hit the trap. The person that, you know, will be the manager will have some guidelines. I mean, it's hard to trade in someone very good at that job to find someone new to just to learn it like that and then have some changeover. So there was some outliers this year. And some extra maintenance to that hair trap thing. That was a real expensive. Oh, and, and, and each thing. one of our anti tra anti trap drains that go into deep well, we have two of them. They're they're almost four thousand a piece. Now they're good for fifteen years. It just so happens that ours expired this year. <laughs> so um, we'll be putting those in at the beginning of the pool. So they're already paid for out of the twenty through uh, twenty four budget, but we'll be installing them for twenty five. questions on the pool we'll have cemetery and I think we'll I just had a comment on the pool I don't know if it's true but I have been told that Miamisburg 
has had the same issues with groundwater leaking into the pool and that they found a way to fix it there are a couple yeah there are a couple ways to do it no. from the underneath we've gotten we've fixed quite a few um we do not have a clay bottom underneath our pool we have sand and gravel so we have a high water table yeah we do yeah so if it was up out we we probably would have had this i wouldn't say fixed but it would have been a lot more repaired than probably what it was but we set an eight foot of water table 24 or year round i didn't know if it was another outside source that you could look we, into like to see what they did but i can ask them but we have used other companies that they've used yeah. They they go in underneath. They inject this. Basic basically, they line it with a blanket underneath with this yeah. uh, urethane stuff. Oh, I believe you. Yeah, no, no. So that's I the type of the things that they do. Okay. Um, and then that crack just keeps moving. Yeah. As it keeps going. <laughs> but yeah. Fun times. <laughs> it is. Uh, Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> I I would suggest since it's almost eight o'clock to stop where we're at and and uh, <coughs> move into other business. We only have the cemetery, we have, right? any we have one left. Is it okay to finish the last the one? Cemetery, the only one we have yeah. left? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, you've got some, you've got some other odd things that yeah. Yeah. could be a cut through. Yeah, yeah, and we can, we can address those tomorrow because they're just the, the capital. All we have is cemetery, would it? Be that okay? looks like it would be a short one, so. Well, okay with that? If, if the mayor and the council is okay with that. I don't have a problem. Let's just finish that up All right, let's go. Okay. Revenue is sale of cemetery lots. We did have a price increase um, this year, so we increased our estimated revenue for next year, open and closed graves and foundations. So we're estimating a little bit of a general fund transfer bringing in 141,000 to supplement the expenditures which are wages and benefits training and travel contractual just a little more than this year and materials and supplies about the same capital for the cemetery is attachments <coughs> and accessories I don't have a good detail on that and miscellaneous five so with a little bit from the general fund to increase that carryover balance our revenue expenditures has a four thousand dollar ending balance it's another one that's hard to predict at least the revenue we can control a little bit of the expenditures but we don't know how many sales that we will have for graves <laughs> um, you yeah. don't get really excited How many people about it, working at the cemetery? Just one? Two. two? Oh, a full timer and a seasonal. Uh, before the cemetery would only share wages of the full timer. Now the full timer is full time out of the cemetery. These were our previous wages, and now we have the full time. We felt that he needs to be he expensed in his fund. So that is new for us. Little bit this year and then the prior years. <coughs> Have we looked any further into that cremation? The columbarium? Yes, I got the guy, uh, guy's contact from Greg, and we're trying to get it together. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Yep. I think that will increase our revenue. <coughs> yeah, because they pay to install it and then they get a share of the proceeds, so. questions we are done for tonight on the budget workshop and we'll bring back some of the answers to the questions and we'll put a hard eye on some of the other things to get them reduced down I have one question I'm sorry um somewhere I read that they were tearing down the barn and putting up a new one or something like that what did I read there well, at the cemetery the barn I read that somewhere and I don't know where well, no. Unless I was having a bad dream. So. Anything, the house goes. Yeah, we've been, we got a new roof on the house. We've been <laughs> really trying to wait to see kind of where it would ever go to be able to fix it up on the inside so customers can actually come inside and sit in a nice area while they're discussing this this part of their, um, uh, of the of the death. Um, but 
it's still almost all the action takes place outside right now. But oh, yeah. Yeah. But I just thought I read that somewhere. Mm -mm. I don't know where I saw that. Okay. That's it. For me. Are we done? Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Is there any other city business? Wait a minute. Go ahead. I have something I'd like to read. I was fully intending to resign my position as councilwoman tonight. However, after speaking to quite a few of my constituents, I've decided against it. But I would like to make a public record, though, as to why I was considering this decision. There have been ongoing issues within the council on a significant difference in opinions regarding our direction and priorities since January of 2024, which have actually gotten worse in the past few months. I feel compelled to express my concerns about the current direction of our city council. It appears that their focus is often more aligned with personal agend agendas rather than the genuine needs of our community. This has led to a growing sense of unease with our citizens regarding the council's ability to effectively serve our, cities, our city's best interests. I believe it is crucial for our council, <clears throat> for our leadership to prioritize the welfare of our residents above all else and learn how to work together to achieve that. I've been grateful for the opportunity I've been given to serve our city and for the support that I have received from my constituents, and I remain committed to the well-being of our city and will continue to advocate for its needs. All right. Is there any other city-related business we need before we need to go into executive session? Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Bill. I move to go into executive session. Yes. To discuss the employment of public em employee for the purpose of preparing for conducting and reviewing collective bar bargaining strategies. We'll get that out in a minute. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any comment? <coughs> if not, Chris. Uh, Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Hagelstick? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chan? Yes. Mr. Mayor, go ahead. I move that the letter the city attorney drew up for separation from the city manager that we that's implemented and we forward that off to him tomorrow if possible. As soon as the attorney can do his thing to get it done. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any comment? If not, Chris. Okay, so your motion is to go ahead and send the contract drawn up by the city attorney, forward it to the attorney of Mr. Bridges as soon as tomorrow. Um, Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? No. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chief? Yes. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I have a question. Uh, tomorrow, it might be for Ms. Harris or Mr. Kiko, we're just discussing the budget tomorrow, correct? And Wednesday, if needed? I think we can probably finish it up. There's only, what, Maybe four tomorrow? or five pages. Is there any reason to have the city attorney here tomorrow night? I don't believe so. You know, that's the other so, thing. Because we're paying him to sit here and listen to us. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, not that I begrudge Jake what he makes. But if you all have got something that needs to go to the attorney, I think if you ask one of the rest of us before it goes to him, it's going to possibly help our budget a little bit. Yeah, it will. <laughs> because there are... Sometimes some things that we can provide information that some of us that have been around here a while can help you with. So if we can do that, I would much rather do that than have him tie up his time because I know how busy he is, number one. 
Number two, the cost goes up. So that's all I'm going to say on that. So, yes, he does not uh, need to okay. be here tomorrow night. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> so, it, Mr. Mayor, if I may, if there's, nothing, may. If there's nothing else, I move to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Motion and a second. Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Yes. Yes. Councilman Brown? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman And yes. Yeah.